So we are about a few months into the iPhone 14 release cycle. And one thing is for sure, the iPhone 14 Pros and the Pro Maxes are definitely seeming to be the most popular version of the iPhone 14s right now. The iPhone 14s, the standard ones, may still be selling pretty well, and they may have more sales numbers than the 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max. But since Apple probably estimated that you know X amount of people were going to get the iPhone 14 and X amount of people were going to get the iPhone 14 Pro, the fact that they're delaying the 14 Pro so much because they can't keep up with the demand means that probably they expect expected less people to buy the 14 Pro than expected, and now they're actually selling fairly well, which is unlikely and unusual for most years. And now, I think this domino effect of people kind of switching more towards the Pro models really started happening with the iPhone 13 Pro. And that is the one iPhone that I'm still using to this day, even though I own a 14 Pro. And the fact that this iPhone 13 Pro is such a solid device and is still holding up very, very well, the fact that this iPhone also brought all those cool features and made a massive difference from the standard iPhone 13s, I think this is what's going to start pushing people to get the iPhone you know, Pro models, which is good and it's bad. It's bad because one, it's a more expensive device and Apple's going to start probably like picking certain features to put on the Pro models, which they already are. And there's probably going to be some time down the road where they're going to massively increase the Pro price tag, something probably to like $13.99 or $14.99 or something like that for the base models. I feel like that could happen at some point. We've seen this time and time again. And back in 2017, we knew like at some point Apple's going to start making a $1,000 phone. And now the iPhones are usually around $1,000 anyway. So that's probably going to end up happening at some point. But when I look back at the iPhone 13 Pro, and when I'm going to look back at the iPhone 13 Pro, probably like two, three, four, five years from now, this is still going to be one of those devices that is going to stand the test of time for so many years. For one, the massive build quality and the beautiful aspect of this specific device with its ProMotion display, with its extremely good chipset, with its great build quality and amazing cameras, I still think this iPhone has a massive throughput in front of it and a massive runway in front of it when compared to the iPhone iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro, which is probably going to be coming out next year. So the fact that this iPhone brought that much capability at that point is massively cool in my opinion. But you're also like, you can't also forget that the iPhone 13 Pro has the same chipset as the iPhone 14, which hopefully that should aid into probably supporting this iPhone for a little bit longer in terms of, you know, software support, in terms of hardware support, and so many other things like that. And that is the reason why when I look at the iPhone 13 Pro, this is an iPhone that is going to stand the test of time for a long time. And it's probably one of the top five iPhones ever made, in my opinion. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.